Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making a drawstring tote. I think this is so cute. It would make a cute lunch tote for a back to school or for mom or dad or college kids. Um, I think it could be a cute tote bag. I think it could be a purse. I think it could be whatever you want, whatever you use a tote bag for. And it's totally customizable. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to make this. It's really pretty simple. I'm going to quickly go over the pieces, but don't worry about writing everything down. I do have a printable PDF that you can download and that will be available with all of the measurements for this project. So real quickly, you're going to need your outer fabric. That is, mine is quilting cotton. You can use whatever kind of fabric you want, but that's going to be the main piece right here that you're going to be looking at. So that piece of fabric measures 18 by 13. I've taken a piece of fusible fleece, 17 by 12, and put that on the back. That's totally optional. If you wanna use a more stiff interfacing, you can do that. It's going to give it a little bit different look, but I use fusible fleece and I cut it slightly smaller than the outer piece. Then you're going to need a piece of lining fabric. You can use cotton if you want. I'm going to use this PUL fabric, pull fabric, and this is a water resistant. I thought if I use this as a makeup bag or a lunch tote, it's going to be easily wipeable. You're going to notice it has a shiny side and a matte side. The shiny side is the wrong side. The matte side is the pretty side. So again, I like this because you can wipe easily wipe it for a lunch tote or a makeup bag, but it's not necessary. You can use cotton if you want. I will link the in the description below uh, some of the sources that I have found for pull fabric. So again, this piece of fabric is your lining and it is going to be, you only need one piece, it's 18 by 13. Next, we need our handle pieces. You're going to need two pieces cut to six inches by 13 inches. And then you're going to need your accent rim, which is this piece right here. You're going to need four pieces of those, and those are cut to two and a quarter by 13. And then you're going to need two pieces of string or rope, whatever you're going to use for your drawstring ties, and those are cut to 36 inches. Lastly, you're going to need your outer drawstring fabric. You're going to need two pieces cut to nine by 14, and that's this piece right here at the top. And so you need two pieces of cotton fabric cut to nine by 14. And again, that's this piece up here on the top. It doesn't have any kind of interfacing. It's just plain cotton fabric. I wouldn't recommend quilting that or anything. You need it to have a little give for the drawstring. So now it's time for a little prep work. We don't need to do anything to our lining fabric, so we can just set that aside. Our outer fabric, I have lined with fusible fleece, again, cut to 17 by 12. It's slightly smaller, and that's just to keep the fleece out of the seam allowance. So if you want to go ahead and quilt this, you can. You don't have to, that's totally optional. It just steps it up a notch. I'm going to go ahead and quilt mine, but it's ap absolutely optional. If you're using a fusible fleece, you do not have to quilt it. If you wanna use regular quilt batting, you will need to quilt it. So I'm just going to do some diagonal lines on mine. You can see I did some on here and it just adds a little bit of something special. But again, it's not necessary. You can totally skip that step. So at the very least, you need to add your fusible fleece to the back of your outer fabric. Moving along to the handles. Again, this is optional, but I decided to put fusible fleece just to keep the look of the quilting that's going to be on the outside but I put fusible fleece along one edge. And again, it's optional. On the other bag, I didn't put anything in here. It's just fabric and it looks just fine. But on this one, I thought I would try putting the fusible fleece in there. And again, it's cut to one and a half by 12, just slightly shorter than the length of the piece of fabric. So to prepare the handle, you're just going to take the piece of fabric, fold it in half lengthwise, press it, open it up, Fold each side to the center, press it, and fold it in half and press it. And then you're going to stitch along the long edge on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and quilt several lines through mine. That's up to you. Again, it's just for looks. But at the very least, you want to stitch along this edge and right along the opposite edge just to give it a symmetrical look. 
Next, we're going to prep our accent rim. You have four strips of fabric cut to two and a quarter by 13. You're going to take two of those pieces of fabric and set those aside. We're not gonna do anything to those, but the other two pieces of fabric, we are going to interface with some of our fusible fleece. So these two pieces, I'm not gonna do anything with. I'm just gonna set those aside. These two I have placed interfacing and those are cut to two by 12, the interfacing. And I just put that right in the center and that's it. So go ahead and fuse two pieces of your rim, accent rim fabric and leave two pieces alone. And that's all the prep work we need to do. Go ahead and get all of those steps done and meet me back here and we'll start assembling the bag. So you can see I've gone ahead and quilted my outer fabric. Again, it's optional, but I went ahead and just did a grid across it. I used a walking foot and I just evenly spaced diagonal lines one direction and then the other. You might be able to see it a little bit better on this side, but it's up to you. If you want to quilt it, go ahead. If you don't, that's fine too. If you quilt it, it tends to sometimes shrink your fabric up a little bit. If that happens, it's not a problem. Just make sure that it's the, you cut your lining down to the same size as the outer fabric and that the accent strips are the same width as the fabric and everything else will come together. So if it happens, don't stress about it. Just cut the lining fabric back down to the size of your outer fabric and make sure that these strips are the same width as this fabric. And then lastly, you can see my handles. And again, I just added some extra stitching just for looks, but you don't have to do that. You can just stitch on the two far edges. All right, so let's take our outer fabric and we're going to fold it in half, right sides together, just like so, lining up that top edge, the folded edges on the bottom, and we're just going to clip that into place. You just need to clip it on the short sides. We're gonna leave that top open. And then we're going to do the same thing to our lining fabric. If you're using this pull, again, the shiny side is the wrong side. So we're gonna put pretty sides together, fold it in half and clip that exactly like the outer fabric, just clipping those short sides. Now you're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're just going to stitch along both of the short sides, back stitching at the beginning and the end on both the outer and the lining. So just stitch down all of the short edges on the outer and the lining and meet me back here. I will tell you that if you're sewing on this PUL fabric that you need to use either a Teflon foot or put some scotch tape on the bottom of your foot. It does tend to want to stick to your machine and that's just going to make your life a lot easier if you just take a couple extra seconds and put that Teflon foot on or put some tape on the bottom of your foot. Once you have your two pieces of fabric sewn on the sides just like this, now we're going to box our corners. I'm going to use my box corner templates. I have these available on my website. They come in the clear. I'm just showing you the blue ones so that you can see them a little bit better. It's easier to see. You don't have to have these. You can just use a ruler and measure two and a half inches by two and a half inches, just like that. But I'm just going to use these. I think that makes things a lot easier for me anyway. So we want to measure two and a half inches from our seam line. So I'm gonna line this up right on the seam line on the right, and I'm lining it up with the bottom. And then we're just going to use a fabric marker or I'm using a pilot friction pen and just mark it out. So again, you can just use a ruler. You're gonna measure two and a half inch on that seam line, two and a half inch on the bottom, and mark it out just like we did. And you're going to do this to all four corners. So you're going to do the opposite corner here. We're going to measure from the left seam line and line it up with the bottom, make sure it's straight and mark that out. And again, I'm using a pilot friction pen, these erase with an iron. I will link, try to remember to link all of the products I'm using in the description below the video. And then you're going to do the same thing to your lining fabric. Just line it up with your seam lines and box out each corner with a fabric pen. Or you can use a regular pen. You're not going to see this in the end. It's going to be on the inside. So we've got those corners marked. Now on this 
PUL fabric if you're using it, I recommend that you go ahead and add a couple of clips before you start to cut this because this stuff's really slick and it wants to move on you. So you need to make sure and get nice clean cuts so that your corners turn out nice and even. So I would just add a couple extra clips. So go ahead and cut each of those squares out from the outer edge. Make sure that you don't overshoot it. Cut exactly on the line, take your time, be precise, and that's going to give you the nicest looking corners. And again, you can see this fabric's trying to shift on me a little bit. So clip it if you need to. Just take your time and do nice clean cuts. You're going to repeat this process on your outer fabric. And you can get rid of those corners that you're cutting out. You're not going to need them. So now we're going to open up this square just like this. And we're going to match that side seam with the bottom center. And it's, it should come together pretty easily. Your sides are going to match up. And you're just gonna push that seam allowance to one side or the other and give it a clip. Just like so. It's pretty easy with this fusible fleece. It makes it a little bit sturdier. We're gonna repeat that process on the opposite side. Just Flatten that out, push that seam allowance one side or the other, and clip it into place. And then you're going to repeat that on your lining fabric, exactly the same way. And again, that PUL fabric wants to move around, so you might need to add a few more clips on it. So this is what it looks like when it's all clipped together. So go ahead and do your lining fabric. So when you have them all done, they should look something like this. You're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch those clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and the end. So do that and meet me back here. Okay, so we've got our buckets formed and we're going to take the outer fabric and turn it right side out. Make sure that you push those corners out. Everything looks nice and neat. like so and then you're going to take the lining fabric you're going to leave that wrong side out so the seams are facing out just like that you're going to place that inside and we're going to match up those side seams we're going to push one seam to the left one seam to the right and I'm looking down here to see which way I pushed that earlier I'm going to push it the same way so it's not twisted in there and then I'm going to put the lining fabric the opposite direction and just clip that into place. Once you have that side clipped into place, you're just going to move to the opposite side seam and match those up, doing the same thing. Again, I'm looking down inside to see which way I pushed that seam. I pushed it to the left, so I'm gonna go to the left on the top, push the other one to the right on the lining, match those up and clip. And now you're just going to work your way around the rest of the bag, clipping it together. I find it easier to kind of pull it taut like this and then reach for the middle and clip that first. Do the same thing on the other side and then work your way around and clip the top. You're going to want to use more clips than not just to keep everything lined up because we're going to have a lot of layers that we're sewing together at once. So go ahead and clip the top once you have that all clipped together, we can just set that aside. We're not going to stitch that yet. Now we're going to work on our accent pieces. So you're going to take your two pieces of accent fabric that have the fleece on them. So that's these two. Put those pretty side down. And I'm going to line them up with my ruler. I need a fabric marking pen. I'll use this black one so that you can see. And we're just going to measure four inches from the side. And we're going to make a little mark at the top of each piece. So I'm measuring four inches from the right side and making a mark. This is a pilot friction pen. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to measure four inches from the left. And we're just going to mark the top and the bottom piece with a little mark. That's going to tell us where to put our handles. So now you want to take your handles 
and you're going to, I like to center it right in the middle of that mark and clip it into place. Make sure that it's not twisted. Take the other end and place that right in the middle. Repeat with the opposite piece. So again, just line it up. And clip it into place. Now take your remaining accent pieces, the ones that don't have any interfacing, place those face down on the top and just add that to your clips. Your handle should be sticking out just a little bit and that's just so that you can see it. You might want to add a couple extra clips on the ends just to keep everything even while you're sewing. And repeat with the uh, opposite handle. Just going to add this fabric into my clips. Now you're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance along that clipped edge. Backstitch at the beginning and the end and backstitch as you go over your handles just to reinforce them. Do that to both and meet me back here. Now take it over to your ironing surface and press those seams open. So you're, it looks like this. They both look like this. You just want to open it up and press those seam allowances open. That's just going to make it work a little bit or come together a little bit nicer. So take a moment and press those open. So now that my seam allowance is pressed open, I'm just going to line these up pretty sides together. I have my fleece on the same side and I'm just lining up those seams. Again, those seam allowances are pressed open so they nest together really nicely. And I'm just going to clip the short edge on both ends. So just make sure everything's lined up nice. Once everything is clipped into place, you're going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch those short edges, quarter inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and the end. And now it should look something like this. Perfect. All right, so now what you're going to do is fold the top part down, just like so. And you're going to crease it along that seam just folding those edges together. And I find it helps to just go all along this edge. And if you have enough clips, clip it together. If you don't use a pen, a uh, straight pen, we don't want to top stitch this just yet. So what we're going to do is just clip this into place all the way around. So once you have it all clipped, it's going to look like this. So what we're going to do is bring our buckets in right here. We're going to take this with the handles facing down and we're going to line up those side seams with the side seams on our little handles here. And we're just going to put this around the outer side. Again, the handles are facing down, the raw edges are facing up. We're just going to fit this around the outer part of the bag, lining those seams up on the sides first. And then go ahead and add the rest of your clips, add the handle to the rest of your clips, just like this. Just working everything into place. Now we've got it all clipped together. And I just want to show you, this is my Teflon foot. So if you have a Teflon foot, this is what I was talking about. It goes along this fabric without sticking really well. You don't have to have it. Just put scotch tape on the bottom if you don't have it, but it does come in handy. And in this next step, we're going to top stitch all the way around this and this will help it not stick to your machine. But like I said, we're going to now top stitch along this top edge where all these raw edges are coming together. And we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the top. So once you've sewn it all together, it's going to look like this. If you were to flip this up, you can kind of see how this bag is starting to come together. It almost looks like a finished bag. But we're not done yet, so go ahead and leave that top part down. I just wanted to show you where we're at. 
So leave it, leave it folded down just like this. We're still looking at all those raw edges. Now we're going to work on our drawstring fabric. So you've got two pieces of fabric and you want to fold these on the short edges in by a quarter inch towards the wrong side. So we're gonna fold in one quarter inch and press, and then we're gonna fold it in a second quarter inch and press, and then top stitch down both of those seams. So you fold each of the short edges in by a quarter inch once, press, fold it in again, press, top stitch, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so it should look something like this. You can see my ends are pressed towards the wrong side and I have a nice top stitching. So now we're going to put these pretty sides together, or right sides together. And you're just going to grab a ruler and we're going to measure two inches from the top of the fabric. and we're going to make a mark. So I'm measuring two inches from the top of the fabric and we're going to make a mark on both of the sides. You can clip this fabric together just to keep it in line. It only takes a couple of clips. And then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch from that line to the bottom only. You're not going to stitch beyond that line towards the top. So again, back stitch, leaving that top part open and sew from the line to the bottom. Now we're going to create the casing. So we have this all sewn together. You can see I've got one side already prepared here. I'm going to show you how I did that in just a moment, but we've got it sewn from the bottom up to that two inch mark and then we need to prepare the casing. So in order to do that, you just take the edges and you fold this top part down that isn't sewn, just fold the corners down a little bit and then you're gonna fold it by a quarter of an inch and press it. It's kind of hard to do this without, that's why I did the other side. So let me show you over here. So what I did was fold the corners in just like this and then press it down a quarter of an inch and then fold it all the way down to where those seams come together on the sides and clip it into place. And these corners, it helps if you just kind of fold them in a little bit. It's just going to help you be able to see the drawstring a little bit better when we go to thread it. If you don't get them flipped in, it's okay. But if you can just fold those corners in a little bit after you get it folded down, it's going to make it a little bit easier when we're done. So just like this. And again, you're gonna turn it over and do the same exact thing to the other side. So we're gonna fold those corners in, fold it down a quarter of an inch, press it, It's really hard to do this without the iron and then fold it all the way down so that it meets the other side and clip that all into place. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So I've got it done and I just, here's a close up of the corner. So see the corners just folded in slightly and everything's ironed into place. That's just going to help us stitch this down. So now you want to take it and make sure you're only sewing through one half of the bag. So you're just sewing through one side and you're just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end because this is where your drawstring is going to be going. And backstitch all the way down the length on one side, turn it over, and do the same thing on the opposite side. So again, you're, back, you're stitching along the edge towards the bottom of that rim or that casing. And this is what it'll look like when it's all done. So you can see I stitched that. So now we have the casing for our drawstring and you can see the openings where we're going to be able to thread it. All right, so once again, we're going to grab our buckets. I don't know why I keep calling them buckets, but we're gonna grab the buckets. We're gonna put the casing side down, the raw edge facing up, and we're gonna put this over all of our pieces. And again, we're gonna mark or find those side seams, match those up. Just like we've done on all the other steps, we're going to clip this 
all the way around. And we're getting a lot of layers here. We've got everything all clipped together. I will tell you that when you're sewing through all this many layers, if your machine doesn't like a lot of layers, you want to go slow. The slower you go, the easier it is on your machine. There's nothing wrong with slowing it down. We're gonna top stitch all the way around again. And you wanna use a seam allowance that is just enough to get past this line on the inside. So we wanna make sure that we have all those seams covered up, but we're gonna stitch all the way around. It's just gonna be a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. And just top stitch again, go slow, especially over those side seams. It's going to get a little bit chunky on you. So just go slow and make your way around the top of the bag and stitch all of your layers together. So we have it sewn together, but we have all these raw edges. So what I recommend, if you have a serger, serge that edge. If you don't, use a zigzag stitch and zigzag all the way around the bag just to make this look a little bit neater. We're going to do one other step to help cover this up, but we're just going to secure all of those edges either with a zigzag or a serger. And you can see I went ahead and surged mine. Doesn't look like I came off of my seam there too well, but the top edge is surged, so all of my raw edges are encased. If you zigzag, that's perfectly fine. So now what you're gonna do is lift this up, and then you're going to lift your handles up. Make sure everything's back into place. And now we're going to reach inside, and we're going to push that seam towards the bottom of the bag and you can kind of feel it. I don't know if I can show you here. So we're pushing this seam inside towards the bottom of the bag. And in my case, it's right where that pink and the red come together from the outside. You can feel it. I'm just pushing it all towards the bottom of the bag. Once we have that, we're going to put this over our free arm of our sewing machine and you're going to top stitch right along this edge, securing that seam down. So you're sewing on the pink part in my case. And I'm just going to use probably an eighth inch seam allowance and just stitch that down all the way around. And I'm going to make sure as I'm sewing that I can feel that seam is being, is pushed down and getting sewn down. So take your time. So once you're done, it's going to look like this. You can see my top stitch and that seam is sewn down. You wanna make sure that those handles are out of your way, that you're not stitching those down. Everything should be facing up as you're stitching that down. Now it's time to add your drawstrings. I am going to use a bodkin. You can use a safety pin if you don't have a bodkin. I just like to use this, it's easy. A little hint, I put a little bit of scotch tape on my rope before I cut it. That keeps it from fraying. But this is a bodkin, you just stick it inside and then push the little slider down and that makes it tight against it. And then you can easily thread it. And again, you can just use a safety pin. So your drawstring channels are on the inside of the drawstring or of the, the tote. And you're just going to put it all the way through. It's gonna come out one side and go right back in. So we've got one channel done. Now we're gonna put it through the other channel. And we're gonna come out right where we started just like that. I'm just gonna release it. Make sure my strings are sticking out so they're not gonna get fed back through there. Now I'm gonna take the second rope and we're gonna do the exact same thing except we're going to start on the opposite side. So this time I'm gonna start over here. The strings are over there. So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm pushing that rope from the first go around down towards the bottom of the channel so that I can go on the top this time. And again, just thread it all the way through, go out the first channel and into the second channel, pushing the rope that's already in there towards the bottom. Super easy. And you can see why I like the bodkin. It's really easy to get it through here. Perfect. So we're going to pull that out and release it. And then you want to make sure your strings are even. So I just like to grab both ends and then just pull it tight and then open it. 
You want to make sure that you open it before you tie the ends together so that you know that you have enough room. And now just tie a knot in the ends. So I just tie them both together, make a knot, and then I'm going to remove my tape. I like when the ends fray. That's a personal choice. So I'm just going to let it fray. I think it looks pretty neat. And you can trim those up so that they're the same size. And repeat on the other side. And that's it. You're done. I think these are so cute. And like I said, I think they're going to make great makeup bags, lunch totes, even a cute little purse for summer or just a grab and go. If you're just headed to the beach and you just want to throw a few things in um, to keep them safe. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there is a new video. I will have links to all the products used as well as a link to my blog where the PDF is with all of the dimensions. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, see you guys. Bye-bye.